All right, now we come to a part in the project where I'm going to be making the side engines. This is where having the top view and the front view has really come in handy because if, as you can see on the top view, on the front view, excuse me, I have actual measurements for these angles. Here's an angle flat parallel to the surface, angle down, and it goes all around. So this piece right here I can make, and the top view gives me the length which is from this line right here all the way to that line where this cone is going to be glued on. Now I may 3D print these pieces if I can't find something suitable, but if you take off this front little gray, dark gray piece and this back gray piece, I have a length here. So all I've got to do, and I apologize, I'm getting over a cold right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm looking at it from the top down, and this, this distance from here to here is one and we'll just round it to three quarters one and three quarters it's it's just a hair shy of three quarters but close enough all right so we know we know the length of it and then i've got to get all of these different uh lengths here so the easiest one is the one that's going to be glued up against the vehicle and i can look at it and tell it goes from there to here so I'm measuring from there to there this is basically the height the maximum height of it and it is two two and a quarter just shy of two and a quarter I'm gonna put two and a quarter um, actually it's more like two and it's one eighth two eighths so it's two and one two three sixteenths wow that's a do I want to get exact? Yeah, I probably should. So I'll go two and three sixteenths. So that's four sixteenths. It's just a shy. So um, let me go. We'll keep going all the way around. Uh, this is uh, one, two, three eighths, which means this also will be three eighths. And this should be three eighths. Yep. So I've got a bunch of those measurements. This one up top is three quarter. This one right here is one two three four five eighths uh, this angle right here is uh, it's right between three eighths and a half an inch i'm gonna put three eighths to one half i'll have to remember to cut that one unusual and then this one is three quarter all right with all of those with all of those what i'm going to do is i'm going to add them I'm going to add them up and it's going to give me a run that I can cut from the chipboard. Then I'm going to score on all these corners, or not all of them, most of them, and I'll be able to fold this as I need to. All right, so let's start with the big one here. We'll go, I'm just going to round. It's two and a quarter, so 2.25. Uh, let me convert everything to eighths because there's a lot of things here. So this is, um, this is two and two eighths. Then I've got three eighths. Then I've got six eighths. Another three eighths. Five eighths. Uh, we'll just round to three eighths. Uh, three quarters, six eighths. Three eighths. And I forgot to measure this bottom right here, which will go from there to there, which is one and a quarter plus a little fraction, oh boy, one-eighths, two-eighths, three-eighths, just shy of one and three-eighths. So let's just put it in there. All right, what I'm going to do now is I've got all the measurements that go all the way around, and I also know that this length right here is one and three-quarter. All right, two times that is three and a half inches. I have a three and a half inch wide piece right here. Yeah, make, this will make two of these. So what I'm going to do now is I need to cut these distances, not cut necessarily, I'm going to score them on here. And then I'll cut this piece in half and I'll be able to fold these things up like a tube. All right, so let's start with the longest side, which I already determined is two and a quarter. It goes from this bottom right here up to that point right there. So two and a quarter will be my first measurement. So I just got to make a line on here, two and a quarter, two and a quarter. 
Now I'm only going to score on this side when it when it the fold or the point is going outward, like there. When it when the angle is like this, where the fold is going inward, I'll have to score on the back side of this. So I got to keep track of that. So here's how I'm going to do it. The first fold is an outside. It's a it's a break fold like this. So to do that, I've just got to cut a 3 8 inch, make a mark at 3 8 from, from this line. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, now I'll score on both of these lines. And when I say score, I'm cutting, I'm cutting through maybe half the distance of the chipboard. This is one of those times where it's just experience. You just have to sort of feel it and you'll get to where you get pretty good at knowing when when too deep is too deep. I find three good cuts is usually enough. See that? I'll do this next line. And to keep myself, to keep things straight, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to circle them as I have done the measurements. Now this three fourths to this three eighths is an outside point. So again, no big deal. I will measure three quarter from this second line. Three quarter is uh, six eighths. So I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Put over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Another cut. Um, this three eighths is going to be an outside bend again. So I can measure three eighths from that line, that new line I just made. One, two, three. Flip it over here. One, two, three. Now I can do two more scores. Three passes is about all I'm willing to do because I do not want to cut through it. If you should cut through it, not a big deal. You can repair it with a piece of tape on one side. There you go. See all my folds or all my cuts? And you can kind of start seeing where I'm going with this. Got it? All right. Flatten it back out. Now, the next one, I'm going to go in 5 eighths and then 3 eighths. But this is an inside corner like this. So I'll have to score this on the back side. So here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to go ahead and measure that 5 eighths line, which will be right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right here. And I'm going to continue these lines on the back side. I have to make a little mark. And I can see them, yep. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to score there on this side. There. All right. Now this next cut goes 3 eighths and then an outside cut to 3 quarters. So I'm going to measure a line from that fold. Uh, what was it? 3 eighths? 1, 2, 3. And also, I'm going to go 3 quarter, which is 6 eighths. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I have another outside cut, which is going to be 3 eighths. 1, 2, 3. So I can do a bunch of these all at once. All right, so let's see if I do this right. It was 3 eighths, then 6 eighths. 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3. All right, now I have lines to score again. And let's do this three quarter line and the three eighths line. All right. Lots of cuts. <laughs> All right. Can you start to see? Can, are you starting to see it now? It's starting to mimic that shape. Let's see. 
Well, for one thing, I did a, I, I cut it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to trim this. I made it too long. <clears throat> I only needed to cut. I, I measured from this top line to this bottom line. I needed to measure to that corner right there. <clears throat> All right, so we're almost done. Let me measure. Let me correct this. This distance right here should be two well it's right at looks like it's right at two inches right at two inches all right so let me, let me trim this so it's so it fits right right at two inches so cut a quarter a quarter of an inch off i have to do this in order for it to fold up properly and to be square so all right now we should start getting something that looks more like what i have here. So I'm just looking at it from above and it's it's pretty cool how it follows it. Still haven't figured out how I'm gonna force it to follow the lines, but I'll, I'll get there. All right, uh, let's see. The last one is just joining this to where, to where it's a 90 degree cut. And I think I measured it as one inch, but I'm gonna just verify that. Yeah, it was one inch. All right, so this last cut will be one inch from this line and I can do it like this I'm gonna go one and an eighth just to give myself a little wiggle room in case I need to do some trimming and fine-tuning one and an eighth okay all right now I can take this piece that has all these scores on it this piece right here that has all these special bends and I can cut it in half because I'm, get, I'm making two of these. All right, so each one's going to be 1.75, which is right there. One point seven five. All right, almost, almost there. And then I cut this piece in half. Two of them. All right, now remember, this needs to be folded up to sort of follow this contour. <coughs> now the tricky part is, because this piece is so flexible, it's how do you do that? Well, I may have to use some foam and some reinforcing pieces. The good news is, the good news is, these are identical. So they're gonna look the same on the left and right. The bad news is, you know, because of measurements and inaccuracies, you know, I rounded like three eighths, and maybe it was like, you know, actually closer to a sixteenth extra. It it doesn't match up exactly to this. There's maybe a sixteenth or even an eighth of an inch variation, but it's okay because symmetrically it will look the same on the left and the right. All right. So what I am going to do now is I'm just looking at this from the top down trying to make it follow trying to make it follow what I can do first of all is I can glue these two together which is what I'm going to do right now I'll glue I'll glue at least the ends and then that will allow me to sort of mold this to where I want it to look okay so I'm going to go ahead and what I'm going to do here is because this is a flip side all right I want it to go this way I have to decide where I'm going to glue it so I'm going to glue uh, the the short one inch flap on the inside of the longer piece, not on top, but inside. So be consistent in where you do your gluing so that both of the motor, both of the engine cowls, I'm calling them a cowl for right now, will look the same. All right, now that my hot glue gun is heated up, I'm going to glue these pieces so that the one inch end is on the inside of the longer two inch. So just put a little bead of glue along this edge. And make sure it's flush. All right. I'm going to go ahead and glue both of them just so I don't forget while well, it's in my memory to do it on the inside. All right, so there we go, two, two engine cowls. Now, 
you can see that these are very flexible and it's going to be tricky to you want you want there are two sides that need to be parallel to this back it's uh, this face right there and this face right there so I can sort of force them I can hold my fingers in such a way to see what it looks like and I can I can actually force it to get square or as close to it as possible what it does is it forces this angle and this angle to squish and it makes it a little taller, but I'm going to be okay with that. All right, so how do you force something like this square? Well, you've seen me do it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bead of glue around this, and then I'm going to sit it down on here and force it square. To do that, I'm only going to put glue on this long edge first, and I'll show you why I'm doing this. I'm doing that so that I can get a... I want to try and get it as flush with one side of this scrap piece as I can and uh, one straight edge at least all right now you can see that this moves right all right so now what I want to do is I want to get some glue on this one right here this will move a little bit I can get some I can squeeze some glue under here and force this piece I should have glued the bottom I should have I should have glued the bottom too but oh well Live and learn. I'll do that on the next one. Let me put some glue on this bottom here just so I can lock it in place. And I'll put it down. All right. What I want to do is make sure this is 90. So I'm putting one of my 321 blocks in there. Pretty good. Yeah. All right. See that? This doesn't move and this doesn't move. Now everything else moves and I've just got to get it to where it will. Everything will be parallel, like this will be parallel to the bottom, and these two faces will be parallel here. It's really, there's probably ways you could do this. Um, I'm just going to use my eyeballs looking at it straight down. It will be close enough. So how do you do that? Well, I'm going to pull everything in, and then I'm going to lay down some glue where I think it's going to go. Just doing this, and then I'm going to force it over those glue pieces over the glue and try and make try and make it look there we did it's not the most elegant solution but it gives me a few seconds before the glue cools to move everything around and what I've ended up with is a pretty square the sides are parallel to where they need to be now all I have to do is trim this around with my blade and then glue another one on this side and I've got a solid piece so before I forget, let me go ahead and do this one. And I know I've got a straight edge here, so I'm going to put glue on the side and the bottom just like I did the other one. Now this one is going to be, it doesn't really matter. There, I can flip them over. Um, technically, I should probably do this one this way, but it doesn't matter. Six and one half does the other because it's going to be symmetrical on the front and the back. So I'm just going to put some glue down on the bottom here and the side, the two-inch side. And I'm going to square it with the actual squareness of this piece of scrap here. Pretty good. All right. And then what I'm going to do, and I tell you what, to help me with the glue, I'm going to get this where I kind of want it to be. And then I'm going to trace it. All right, so that, that needs to go right there. I'm tracing it so I'll know where to put the hot glue down. And then these need to go sort of up so I can square this piece right here with the side. All right, there we go. So what I'm going to do is curl this in. I've got a line to follow to put a bead of glue down. Need some more hot glue sticks. And this will give me just enough cooling time that I can sort of force it all into place. Get up there, you get there, you get there, oops, come on, and that's going to be as good as I can get it, I think, right there. All right, so this one's dry, so let me go ahead and trim it out. And you can just follow the blade, you know, use the use the angles to follow the sides you need just to, to trim it flush. Your fingers are on the inside of the of the cowl, so they're sort of protected. Alright.
got this little bit extra here to trim. And I went a little heavy with the glue, so I'm having to cut through quite a bit of glue. There we go. All right, it came loose a little bit, but that's okay. I'm just going to fill some of the hot spots with, or some of the gaps with hot glue. Press it down and then wipe it off with my finger. Ow! That's hot. And that will hopefully seal it. There we go. Just like that. <laughs> I always jump the gun and wipe it too soon. Too soon. The other thing you can do if you want is you can put a little some some glue on the inside here, which is probably what I'm going to do. It's kind of hard to get the needle down in there, but I can use gravity and drop some glue down in there. That's what I'm doing. I'm just uh, letting letting the glue fall down and cover cover some of those uh, connections I made. There we go. Not not ideal. I don't know if you can see in there. Yeah, see the mess of glue. That'll just uh, strengthen the edge here. All right. Now all I have to do is put a bead of glue on this side all the way around and then press it down gently because I don't want to deform it. Just let it drop, give it a little press and let that cool and I'll have, the, I'll have that one done in a minute. Let's go ahead and do this one, cut this one out. This one I didn't have so much glue which is a good thing. I'm just loosening this one from this piece so I can better move it around. All right. Did pretty good on the flush side there. Oop. inner angles are kind of tricky sometimes to get. Just put your fingers inside so you don't get them cut. And then just press down on that back piece. There we go. And you end up with a piece that's pretty flush. I missed a piece right here. Ah! Again, you got to be careful. You cut it too much and you, you end up breaking it off. So I'm going to repair that. A little bit of glue. And then like the other one, I'm just going to drop some glue down in here just to strengthen. I'm actually just letting it fall down in there and get on, get in those corners. There we go. All right, and then last but not least, let's glue this one down. Again, just let it let it sort of fall and then press so you don't deform it. <clears throat> let that one cool. I'll go ahead and trim this one. Watch your fingers. You no longer have a place, safe place to put your fingers now inside. So just put them on top maybe. One engine cowling completely and you know this is going to go on the side like like so All right, let's go ahead and cut this one out and then we'll get the placement of these cows put on and that will be the end of this video in the next one we'll start working on I guess maybe the turret and the cockpit Make sure 
sure this one's all flush. All right, <clears throat> there we go. One on each side, like so. Now we can use the top view to figure out where to glue them on. And again, we're gonna be doing some measurements here. So technically what I could do is set this on here, <laughs> like, like so, I'm just lining it up. It's not exact, but it's close. And I can kind of see that Wow, I really, what did I do wrong here? Oh, <laughs> I, was, I was looking at it this way, it's this way. I was like, man, this thing's way longer than it should be. All right, there we go. <laughs> All right, and I also can use the front view to determine the height. So uh, front view, I can put this on here and I can, I can, uh, all right, so is that right? No, it needs to be a little lower. It needs to be right there. That's right. All right. Um, okay. Now, what am I doing wrong here? This was the top for the turf. That's right. Okay, so that goes there. I'm just looking at it. So I need to draw a line so I can measure. So it's kind of right right there. That will be I need to measure this distance right there. And then that line will go flush with this line. Is that right? Yep. All right. So that will give me the height this way. Now I need to get the front and back. <clears throat> front and back's pretty easy. I can actually look at it from top down and see that the front cowling is lined up with well it's pretty much lined up with not quite it's right behind this line right behind this line so it would be like right about like that you see not right on top of the line but just a hair like like that again it doesn't have to be exact um i'm just gonna go this way uh just close enough and what I'm looking at now is, if I glue that there and that there, is that right? Yeah, that's what it, that's pretty good. Um, I'll be darn. Sometimes I surprise myself. Look at that, not too bad, pretty darn accurate. All right, so what I can do is I can, I'll be darn, I mean, huh, I can even use this as a guide, just hold it on there. Talking to myself, sorry guys. All right, so, yeah, I can do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some hot glue all over this, all over that. <clears throat> Turn it sideways, line it up, line it up, and then press it in. Not bad. And do this side. I put a lot of glue so it won't cool down so fast. Give me a little extra wiggle room for moving things around. Put this one on there, scoot it over. Now what I'm gonna do is make sure it's lined up. Front to back, front to back. Set it on here. I'm just making sure everything looks square. That's about as good as I'm going to get it. All right, there we go. Can you see it starting to come together? It doesn't look like much now, and it always looks bad in chipboard form, but once we start adding all the detail work on the outsides, this thing's going to really start coming together. All right, there you go. Next video, we'll do a little more detail on the outside, um, probably the cockpit and the turret.